Welcome, welcome you guys. This is the Syndra. I've decided to do a fresh campaign in EU4. Uh, basically, we're waiting for the Dharma patch to come out, which will uh, impact India quite a bit. But uh, I've already done my Delhi campaign there, so I'm kind of just... I figured I would try something different this time around. A long, long, long time ago, I did an Austria campaign where I formed the HRE, and I'm sort of tempted to try that again. It was a very different campaign because it's not just about conquering the entire world or something like that. You actually have to keep the HRE together. And that might prove to be quite difficult. So hopefully I can finish this campaign before Dharma comes out. Uh, I might shelf it if I can't finish it before Dharma. But then again, there's no release date for Dharma yet. So it might happen in August. Hell, it could happen in September. But uh, I have absolutely no idea. That's the thing, nobody does. But right now, the only objective I have with Austria is to form the HRE. And I haven't really checked out... Uh, I'm not going to do the Iron Man mode. Um, I haven't really checked out the mission tree for some of the new nations because I know a lot of them got mission trees. But uh, I'm pretty sure Austria got one as well. So, let's change this intro song because I just don't like it. Um, so... Shall we take a look at who has decided to rival us? Denmark, the Ottomans, and France. Well, as I recall, since we start out as the Emperor... Uh, maybe I should have this Imperial Map Mode uh, hotkey here. Shortcut P. Well, that's an unfortunate one. So, these are all territories that belong to the HRE. Uh, right now, Newmark belongs to the Teutons, but there's a chance that uh, Brandenburg will get the Newmark purchase, where they pay Teutons to buy back Newmark, which is uh, ideal. That would help me gain some imperial authority, which is this thing over here. Right now, we are the Emperor, and everybody loves us to death, and we are making 0.18 imperial authority every month. And... Uh, we needed 50 for these, yes? Yeah. We need 50 of these reforms, uh, of uh, this Imperial Authority, in order to do the reforms. And in order to form the HRE, we have to go through all of these. So, we have to make sure that we keep as many princes as possible within the HRE, because they all give us Imperial Authority. We have to make sure the free cities stay free, and we have to take back some of the territory that has been taken away from the HRE. Like this part here, all of this is a part of Burgundy. So Burgundy and Province. Yeah. So Province has Lorraine as a junior partner. So that's these two, these three provinces over here. If I change the map mode. Yeah, so Province has a lot of territory all over the place. But these three things here should belong to the HRE. So we have to get that back. And the other things here are Burgundy. Burgundy has this province over here that we want back. Luxembourg. And then we want these three as well. And then we have Holland and Brabant that are both junior partners of Burgundy. So we're going to want all of this back. And there's also a Holstein up here which belongs to... Uh, I think it's just Holstein right now. Yeah, Holstein. But they are a vassal underneath Denmark. And they get annexed usually pretty quickly. So we're probably going to have to go to war with Denmark. So the fact is we're rival to Denmark is probably not a bad idea. We're probably going to go to war with them soon. Maybe. Let's just add Denmark here because we know we have to fight them at some point here. But France and the Ottomans, I don't see the benefit of... Uh, pissing them off like Venice over here Venice has provinces we need There is an event called the Shadow Kingdom where basically Italy uh, These nations over here they leave the HRE But in order to rein them in I have to take back some provinces. I have to take back These three provinces over here. I have to take this one or I could give it to Milan technically this is a core of Milan and it belongs to Venice at the moment. 
So we have to take back these four from Venice. We don't have to take Istria or actually Venice itself. And then we have to take some territory from Rome. We have to take stuff from the Pope, which is going to piss him off quite a lot here. Um, the event hasn't fired for the Shadow Kingdom yet, but I do believe I have to take these four guaranteed. And I think I have to get Rome to be my vassal, or at least be inside the HRE. Um, I'm pretty sure I have to do get that done. So, yeah, let's see here. We are going to want some people as vassals or allies of us. Like, I think Hungary is a very good option because... We start out as historical friends. That's a modifier for opinion. And I think I will start by getting an alliance with Hungary. That's always a good start for Austria. After that, though, well, we only have two diplomats? Really? That's gonna hinder us quite a bit here. But I'm gonna take a look at the mission tree here. So, the stuff here in the middle is just the default one, it seems. Yeah. High income, allies, force limit. Okay, so we have here, secure electors. Uh, at least five electors are backing Austria to become emperor. Have at least a hundred opinion of Austria. So we have to uh, grease some palms with the electors of the HRE. But um, they have to also have a hundred opinion of us. It's not enough that they're voting for us. They have to like us by a hundred. And the fact is... I only have two diplomats. That's going to be difficult here. Control Bohemia. Uh, hmm. The fate of the Kingdom of Bohemia has long been of interest to the Duke of Austria. We must take a more active hand in this and bring the kingdom more firmly into our orbit. Huh. So when I do this, we get restoration of union on Bohemia. Ah, so we have to go to war with Bohemia and then make of them our junior partner, okay? After that, what do we get? We get Kingdom of Bohemia for 15 years. Yearly legitimacy and Imperial Authority growth. 10%, that is quite good. And then we get a permanent claim on Silesia area. Um, Slovakia, those are areas. Yeah, we have to control those four provinces there that are glowing in Silesia over here. Okay. After that, we gain claims in Slovakia, Malapolska area, and Red Ruthenia. Oh, really? Conquer Galicia? That is interesting. So we're going to... Going down this left route here, we're going to secure our like power base, and then we're going to go after... Uh, Poland. That is very, very interesting. But let's see, this area over here is quite big, actually. Um, does Hungary have any claims on this? They do not. So that's very, very interesting. They've changed so much here. It's uh, very nice. Now, on this side, we have decline of Hungary. Have more development than Hungary. So they have 210, and we have 165. Okay, and then we get Restoration of Union. Oh, but if we can get the Restoration of, if we can get a Union over Hungary without doing this, then do we bypass it? What happens there? Like, I know there's a chance of us getting a Union over Hungary just because they're Catholic. I'm not sure. Then we have Royal Hungary. Uh, all provinces in Slovakia, Transdanubia, and Alfold area are owned by us or its non-tributary subjects. And then we get claims on Croatia and the East Adriatic. Secure Croatia. Ooh, we have to go to war with Bosnia and stuff. But the Ottomans are going to be here by then, right? Okay, so we get a claim on all the stuff over there. Italian ambition. Uh, we get claims on Northern Transylvania, Southern Transylvania, and Venetia area. And to do that, we have to take everything over here, including Venice. 
Really? We get five mercantilism. Protected Italian interest for 10 years. Local production goes up and tax income. So this is basically just killing Venice. That is very cool. And conquer Transylvania. Uh, yeah, but if, uh, if we grab Hungary, that's not going to become an issue. And we get a permanent claim on Serbia and Wallachia area. Really? So, Wallachia and Serbia. So if we finish this, there's no mission after it, but we do get claims on all of Wallachia, these three, and then all of Serbia. Very, very interesting. So there's a path here to uh, either... All of the paths lead to here, basically. Uh, secure Bohemia and then go after... There's no mission to, like, take out Burgundy or France. I mean, all of the missions is just... Bohemia and Hungary, and then some uh, nations around them. But we want Hungary to be an ally. Do we want to go to war with him? I just made an alliance. Let's pay up, wait one day here. Let's put it on speed 3 here. Uh, okay, so Hungary is our ally. We might have to break that at some point just to be able to do this. Maybe we should not get a marriage with them. Ah... Uh... Let's focus on securing electors for now. Uh, we have five diplomatic relations. Um, yeah, so Bohemia. Since we're going to go to war with Bohemia, maybe we should not ally them. They're rivaled with Hungary, so that's not even going to work either. So they're rivaled with Brandenburg. And Brandenburg is rivaled with Saxony. So usually you have to pick... Like these guys, three here, Brandenburg, Saxony, and Bohemia, usually fight each other. So I'm thinking we should cure Brandenburg. Offer them an alliance. Uh huh. Let's wait one day. They went with We Need a Jagalian. Okay, so Poland has Lithuania as a junior partner. Well, that sort of makes sense. I never understand why they sometimes decide not to do that. It just seems so weird. Um. Ottomans, France. Now let's take Venice. Yeah. We'll make Venice our rival. Because we don't like them. And France, we don't really care about. But we can rival the Ottomans. Or we could actually rival Bohemia. Yeah. So we have Venice and Bohemia as our rivals. Because we're going to go to war with them at some point. So that's good. We have Brandenburg and Hungary. Some of these guys we can't get a royal marriage with because they are a uh, uh, they're an archbishopric. Like Mainz and Cologne are both archbishoprics. So getting them to vote for us without the marriage is annoying, I suppose. But we can do that regardless. Trier is also an archbishopric. But let's get the Palatinate over here. Offer them an alliance. Let's wait one day. Okay. Hungary wants a marriage. I don't want that. I'm sorry. That's too permanent right now. That's not going to fly. Let's get a royal marriage with you. Maybe they'll send it for us here. So we got the Palatinate and we got Brandenburg. And those guys are going to vote for us. I'm pretty sure. I kind of would like Saxony to join us regardless. I mean, they. it says here they will join us. We'll just see what happens. If they decide to break their alliance, it's fine. But these guys are not going to fight each other, which is going to help me quite a bit, actually. So we got Saxony, Palatinate, and Brandenburg. Okay. And I'm four out of five alliances. Is there anybody else that I should consider here? We have uh, Castile. We have Aragon. We got the Papal State. Now, the thing is, we're going to go to war with the Papal State, so that's not going to fly. Uh, let's check if Venice has any enemies. We've got Aragon, the Mamluks, and Burgundy. Well, Aragon would be interesting, but there's no land that they can take here. Like, I was thinking of inviting somebody in on a war on the promise of territory and then just, you know, stabbing them in the back. 
but Aragon is just too far away. The Mamluks and the Burgund Burgundians don't matter. Uh, right. We don't even want Crete. So, yeah. What about Bohemia here? Hungary, Poland, and Brandenburg. Well, I suppose Castile is always a good choice. I mean, especially if they get the union over Aragon and Naples. But I'm thinking we just secure our uh, dudes here. Like, Mainz is not going to vote for us. If we ally him... Yeah, let's just do that. Okay, so... I'm gonna have a lazy diplomat on my allies. Basically, we have to do that. And then let's go ahead and do a spy network against Venice so we can go to war with them as soon as possible. I'm gonna be on speed two here. So, these are our rivals. We have uh, Denmark, Bohemia, and Venice. And those are the only claims we have at the moment. We have a navy, which is kind of redundant. We don't need that. Actually, wait. The merchants. Usually that gets fucked up here. Um, we are collecting in Venice. Hmm. It is, it is an end node, but how much are we collecting? 0.27. Uh, no, you know what? Let's go ahead. We're transferring trade from here. Let's actually transfer trade from Krakow as well. Get him out of Venice. I think that's going to help us a bit more. Maybe. I'm not that concerned about trade at the moment. Min-maxing that. Also, my army. We got a 5-2 and we got a 7-2. So we start out with quite a lot of calf. But then again, we are the emperor of the HRE right now. Yeah, our force limit is 51. But... I'm thinking most of that is because of uh, states in the Holy Roman Empire it gives us 25, and the free cities gives us 4. So we're getting 29 extra force limit because we are the emperor here. Damn. Okay, well, let's group, uh, let's group you guys up here in Gurs, and I will get you a proper army here. We also start with a gold mine. I remember that. This is like the only gold mine in uh, Europe. Oh, no, no. They added one in Bohemia. And there's another one here in Hungary. Really? Really? That's interesting. Uh, we should have the income to support advisors right from the start. And this is awesome. We have careful. We start out with aggressive expansion impact minus 10%. Very, very nice. Land force limit, this does nothing for us. I suppose technically this guy is better, the fort defense. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, the limit guy is useless. Oh, spy network, that's good. We're trying to spy on Venice right now. And then a diplomat, the only thing we have is a missionary. Actually, let's see if we can't get something from our estates here. Uh, what do you guys control? The clergy have 20%? Oh, they only need to have 15. Okay. Nobility need to have 15. So you got cows and iron, and you guys both have iron. We have a lot of that. Ideally, this 556 is something I want the nobles to have. So I'm thinking if I take this away from you. Oh, I can't take anything away from you. Uh, okay, and the burgers have steer mark? Why? I guess it's just so I can get some early monarch points. I could give this thing to the burgers. It's gonna put their influence up to 40. No, it's not enough. Fuck. Well, let's just do this and I'll sort it out uh, next year. So give us monopoly charters. Give us diplo. Um, yeah. Are we going to go to 75? Uh, this would put us up to, like... Uh, yeah. It would put us up to 74, which is not enough. 
So I'll just take the uh, 100 Diplo. I'll take the cash as well. Thank you. Clergy, I'll seek support. I'll send a due to the Pope. Ah, do we need that? We don't really need that. We're going to go to war with the Pope for this territory at some point. So he's going to be very, very pissed off with us. I'm thinking just 100 is enough. We don't really need to beef up our influence beyond that. And call Diet and give me the 100 military points. Okay. Very, very nice. We start out with three advisors, but I did not get a good one for the admin. It's fine. It's fine. So, uh, the force limit... Uh, no, the combat width is 20 at the moment. So, that's Brandenburg, yeah? Accept that. We're going to need to beef up this army up to the force limit. And as soon as we can go to war with Venice, I think we're going to do that. He allied with France and Savoy. Really? Really? He already allied with France. Well, France is quite weak at the moment. And if the surrender of Maine happens, I think I'll just declare on them regardless. Um, so it's 20 wide. So if I do this... You will be 20 wide with 4 calf. I'm not that afraid of France at the at the moment right now. They don't have Elan. Uh, Elaine? Elan? What? I can't see it? That's weird. But basically they get a huge boost to, uh, to morale. I think it's like their third or second idea. Uh, let's see, what kind of emperor did I get? I don't really want him to die. Ooh, this is, is this new? This leader will get between two and seven pips. A zero, two, two, one. Okay, this is the event I was talking about with Italy. The Shadow Kingdom. Uh, let's see here. The Kingdom of Italy and the Empire. For years now, imperial authority over the Kingdom of Italy has been waning. Successive emperors have failed to impose their will on the Italian states, and large areas that are formerly part of the empire have been lost to Venice and the Papal States, who reject the empire's right to them. Unless northern Italy is firmly brought back into the empire, the states there may slip out of imperial control forever. So basically, I have to get all of these states back under our control before 1490. So we are on a deadline here of 35 years? No, 45 years. And they have to stay there until 1550. Okay. Well, we can get that done. I'm pretty sure of that. We'll just have to... Uh, I'm going to change this to best guess. And let's make sure we're getting news from France. Yeah. And England. We'll add that. Let's get Castile as well. Aragon. Yeah. Let's get news from all of these big nations over here. I'm also interested in your rivals. So the Mamluks, Burgundy, and Aragon. Okay. Let's see. Uh, Mamluks. Yes. Ottomans. Yes. And Hungary should be here. Yes. Poland should be here. We want to make sure we get all the news we can. Come on. There we go. Okay. So he started kissing ass with Hungary, which is not an elector, so that's not technically helping us at the moment. But as soon as we can, we're going to need another diplomat. Uh, I know you can get one for being the papal controller, right? Yeah, an extra diplomat there. But the chances of that happening is... <sighs> we're going to have to piss off the Pope. That's basically... that's going to have to happen here. So, yeah. Let's see if we add you to here. A 0-2, I mean, the 2 shock is nice. But going to war with you is going to be difficult, I think. <sighs> because you're going to control the entire navy there. We could potentially invite Hungary in on this, right? Uh, he does not have claims on Dalmatia or Istria. Like, Istria is a part of my state here, of Carniola. 
but it's not a required state. So I'm not going to waste the aggressive expansion taking it. But like Dalmatia down here, I don't mind giving that to Hungary. I don't. So if we go to war and I call them in, hopefully they go to war with Venice. They help me with this war. Because if I can have Hungary on my side against France, that's going to help so much. Uh, yeah. So we're just waiting on claims here. So Poland has decided to go to war with the Teutons. So they've got claims on all of this. Hopefully they don't take Newmark because then I'm going to have to go to war with Poland at some point to get Newmark back. But it seems like they have a mission to do this. It's a permanent claim, yeah. So they have a permanent claim on all of this. So playing as the Teutons must be really, really difficult with the new mission trees there. Uh huh. Let's see here. So build to force limit is not something I'm going to be doing anytime soon. That's way too much money and manpower. Uh, it is September. Can I revoke some of these things now? December. Uh, there we go. So I'm definitely want to take this away from you. Uh, we can get our claims on Venice. Here's the thing though. Um, usually I would want to take the fort. But I'm not entirely sure I can grab all three of these provinces in one war with the aggressive expansion. So if I take this fort away, I'm going to have to take the capital fort if I want more territory in like the second or third war. So maybe not taking the fort is best and just taking the big province here of Verona. That would be kind of nice. But uh, let's see here. If I grab a claim on Verona, it is 21 development. We can now go to war. Let's recall you. And let's see how this looks. So, oh, they have a trade league. Savoy, Verdun, Oldenburg, Siena, Luca, East Frisia. Damn, that is one scary fucking trade league. Uh, okay. How do I break this? That is very, very interesting, I suppose. But um, maybe if they go to war? Ah, that is annoying as fuck. Let's just keep spying on them and try to get some more claims then. It seems that we cannot go to war with them right now. Oh, they went to war. Ah, so France might not join them here. Very, very interesting. I'm going to call you back, even though I do kind of need you to kiss ass with people. Uh, 16th of November. Okay, get in there. Okay. France will still join. So the attitude towards enemies, they really hate our guts. And I'm pretty sure France is going to win that war. Who is he fighting at the moment? He is fighting England, and that is it. England had no allies. Is this a defensive war? No, England declared the war, so they were not able to call anybody in on this. Interesting. Well, unless England gets its, troop, its troops down there quickly, he's going to lose that, like he always does. Ah, that's unfortunate. Uh, it looks like my election is almost not going to work here. Look at that. Plus seven. Let's improve relations with you. I need to get them up to a hundred. That was the mission, right? Yeah. I have five electors and they have to have at least a hundred opinion of me. So I have these three and then these two maybe. And Trier is actually not voting for me. Oh boy. That is definitely not good. But I'm also kind of concerned by the fact that this trade league is massive. Oh, they're at war with England. You called them in. So, you're going to move your troops out of your lands. <laughs> so maybe we could declare this war. Uh, Brittany wants access. Yeah, you can get access. I'm the, I'm the emperor of the HRE, so they have access to walk through anything now in the HRE. But let, let's go ahead and pause it here. So, 
I've just gotten started on my campaign here as Austria, and uh, it seems like my initial war against Venice might not happen for a bit. Uh, but they are fighting England right now. It's not going to be a tough war, so I have to do this relatively quickly. But uh, I'm hoping we can get France to not defend Venice. Or actually, I could just declare the war regardless. I do have to fight so many nations, though. It is ridiculous. He has a lot of people here. How do you have a trade league this big? Shouldn't you be, like, capped on Diplo points or something? Did they change the way um, trade leagues worked? Because you used to sacrifice uh, diplomatic relations for a, a member, right? So basically, if you had five diplomatic relations and you invite three nations to your trade league, you lose those three diplomatic relations. You only have two left. Right? I'm pretty sure that's how it works. But he has two allies and seven people in his trade league. Not to mention he's got two vassals. How the fuck are you keeping up with this? It doesn't make any sense. I don't get it. Also, I forgot to embargo. Ah, oh, crap. Well, whatever. So, we'll figure it out as we go along. But anyway, I will see you guys in the next episode. But until then, see ya. And thanks for watching.